JavaScript. Java okay. and JavaScript are two different languages. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. Fuck. Was it, wait, Halik? Who said you, yeah. you were familiar with yeah, okay. it looks like you're, you got a little situation, right? So Java package, Java lang class file instruction doesn't exist. That's where you're stuck on right now? Huh? Oh, well, you can see my screen, right? Yeah, yeah, I can swap to it, so it's really good. Okay, Um. yeah, I wanted to try and display the, because I'm making a, a sort of chessboard. Uh, it's Japanese chess, Gomoku for my class. Oh, nice. Uh, I just, huh? Yeah, yeah, no, he, yeah, I said it's nice. I just wanted to see, is there like a a way to display the board? I, I think you have to make a loop somewhere um, after I get to this statement. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and, so it, it sounds like command line, right? So, so you're, and you're not trying to do a GUI, right? You, you just want it to appear in the command line, in the terminal, right? Yeah. Wait, wait, I'm not trying to do a what you said? I didn't get So that. it's like, what you're looking at right now is a GUI. Anything that's like not a command line that's like visual is a GUI. A GUI? That's yeah, a uh, graphic, graphic user, user interface. interface. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what's I, okay. I've never heard that term, but I'm oh. still very new at this. But all right, yeah. yeah I don't... All right, so let all right, so let's try to run the Java application. Let's see what you got. So we we need a loop, right? Yeah, somewhere, but I'm um, just not. Oh wait, hang on. Um, yeah. Okay, so you can see my screen. All right, so, you know, play game, exit, into your choice, one, you know, select player, player one or player two, player one, player is black, random player is white. Uh, oh, it's not supposed to print out welcome to Gamoku, but yeah, it just kind of finishes, but um, I would need a loop somewhere here and then uh, to display the board, but I'm just... I'm just not sure how to go about that 100%. Right, 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 all right. Um, yeah, so long story short, right? Um, mm -hmm. Like, so this, this in this switch, right? This, this switch case shouldn't be, you, you shouldn't display the board in the, when you're choosing selecting the player, right? Once you get the player, right, you save that variable, and then the next part of code should be, should be the for loop. So the for loop should happen after the switch. You understand? It okay, should happen yeah. after the switch. Okay. Um, all right, so I don't, so all this I probably shouldn't use, right? I should, let me just comment that. Yeah, out. you gotta choose. Well, yeah, and, and Yeah, and the thing is, like, yeah, I definitely want to imagine because I, I, I would suppose you have to print out the board. You, you, you should be yeah. able to highlight it and hit Control Slash to comment it. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there you go. yeah I knew there was a way to do it. I just completely forgot. Yeah. Um, yeah, how do I? Well, I would put system and like display the board, but how would I? I would have to make like a. Um, like columns and rows of 15. Yeah. And I'm not exactly sure how to go about doing that. Yeah, so, yeah, you're going to need, need a library, right? Have have they chopped, um, is it, have they taught you about Maven? Have they taught you about Gradle? Uh, they taught me about Maven literally like yesterday. Okay. Uh, and it hasn't sunk in, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, so yeah, you're going to have to find a package, like a Maven package that's going to do it because, like, doing it from scratch, I mean, tic-tac-toe, we, we could do that. We could do, like, a little tic-tac-toe board. But Gomoku, I, I imagine, would be a bigger board. I mean, we yeah. could try first with tic-tac-toe. Gomoku, yeah, it's going to it's gonna be a large board because, yeah. I, I know in the beginning of your career, it's hard to, like, gauge how difficult something would be. But, like, I don't even know the game Gomoku. What, what the game Gamoku is, right? So you have to make you have to. It's like Connect Five, essentially. Okay. okay. Like Connect Four, but Five instead. I, I mean, we could try it. Um, what what essentially you want to do is um. Uh, sorry, you cut out there. Yeah. I, I, I can't hear. Yes. Yeah, so what essentially you want to do? Um. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. Let's. Uh, um. Yeah. Let's start out with the for loop, right? And then we can print to the screen. 
and oh yeah no you're keeping it looks like you're keeping that four in the switch yeah that the four loop needs oh, to go shit. after the switch case so what you want to do you uh, want to collapse the switch case so uh here right i would guess uh, right? yeah but you got a lot of syntax errors so you got to fix those okay um Yeah, all right, so let's walk through it together. Yeah, delete the four. Delete the four keyword. Okay. Yep, and I'll scroll and up. Then, so all of this, I mean... Wait, hold on, slow down. So, so you see line 44? Where is that? Where is that open yes. bracket? Yeah, you want to com try oh. to comment that out. All right, good, that oh, fixes that. Yeah, all okay. right, good. Right, but... You, you don't, you kind of don't want to like kind of scroll around because you don't know where the switch statement ends. You want to collapse the switch statement so you know where it ends. So let's go to the top of the, to the switch statement and let's try to collapse it. Okay. Um, so I guess here's where we yeah, start. 16. Yeah. And then try to, and then hover over line 16 and try to collapse it. The actual number 16. Oh. Yeah, you see, you see the collapse icon. You see the down arrow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Damn. Okay. That's convenient now. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I get so disorganized with a lot of stuff. Um, okay. So outside the switch statement would be like here after seventy six, right? No, it would be after seventy one, right? You see how it collapsed? For, like, let, let's look at let's look at six, like this line sixteen. You see how there's only an oh. open break, a bracket and a closed bracket? Yeah. Yeah. So that's how you know it collapsed. All right. So now let's line 71. Let's make that for loop. Okay. Um, and I did see, uh, I did get like a message um, from somebody in my team about like, hang on one sec. Is he, where is it? Uh, just bear with me. Yeah, he did um, give us like a hint on what the for statement would be. So I don't know if this is entirely right, but for integer row equals one, row greater than Gromoku with plus one, row plus plus. Um, but I should. Yeah, I, I don't know. If this yeah, that's okay. Let's let, let's start from scratch. Let's break the problem down. Because the first thing you need to do, you need to be able to print the game. If you can't even print yeah. the game, then there's no point of for loop. So okay. yeah, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that for loop. Okay. And display the board, right? Yeah, and um, you gotta like really, yeah. And then I know this is like very hard, but you see those open those closed brackets that you just left out. Oh, this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like you gotta. Yeah, so like I, I think one thing to try to handle that is, um, try to like you want to try to break the problem into like smaller bits first, because, yeah, because you can't because you're going to continue with, while leaving those open, right? But mm -hmm. um, the but the problem's too big. I think first thing you want to like try to you want to try to get to that smaller step you want to focus on that smaller step on smaller steps it's easy for you not to let those syntax errors linger around all right so um yeah first things first um yeah so can you, can you hit backspace to get rid of that tab it the four should start at the same line as switch yeah hit backspace okay no it, it not the same so same line, not the same line horizontally, vertically. Oh, you mean? Hit Control Z. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, collapse yeah. it. Yeah, go ahead, collapse the switch. Yeah, now go collapse the switch statement. Yeah, go. Oh no, you deleted it, right? You need that open break bracket. You need that closed bracket. Yeah, now okay. go s collapse the switch statement. The line to go to line sixteen. When I say collapse, it's it's the okay, line yeah. sixteen, and then you you hit Sorry. that collapse. Yeah, right. And now, 
control V. Yeah. Yeah, now hit. Okay, so, oh, you're deleting it again. Yeah, you're deleting All right, we're going to have to do, yeah, we're going to have to, yeah, go back. You no, know, the key thing, you got to remember here, you need that, you, you need that um close, you need that close bracket. If you delete it, like, you have to put it back. Right, so put back the close bracket after um yeah, put it close bracket. Yeah. Alright, good. Are oh, you still getting an error? No, it it's green. Uh I don't see an error anywhere. Oh, okay, it's probably the debugger. Can you hit the stop button? Stop button. Probably, stop. Yeah, it's probably like a break point. Okay, oh, click the alright, click the red button. I think it's throwing us off. I'm the VS Code guy, not IntelliJ, so Yeah, click okay, it. Okay, this? Yeah, click it. All right, good, it's gone. Okay. All right, so now line 65, let's, let's start at line 65, good. All right, so now you say four. Four. Okay. And? So basically what you want to do, right, you want to print something, and then you want to print a prompt, right? This is how a game works, right? Like tic-tac-toe is you print out the board, right? You see the board, and then you, you ask the user what's the next move going to be, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so let's try to do something. So right now we want to make this infinite loop, right? So did they tell you how to make infinite loop in Java or no? Um, they did, but I mean they kind of discouraged that because why would you like? I mean they they told us they showed us how to make an infinite loop, but they told us you know, that's not something that we really like got into the habit of doing. Um, so I, I don't really no, I don't really know. Yeah, but you got to think about why they say that, right? So in this, in, in what we're doing right now, what's our goal, right? To print to the screen and then prompt the user for the next move and print to okay. the screen again. Like, like think about, you. like, you have to think, like, when you code, you have to, like, you have to think, like, I, I, I forgot. Alana, do you remember how I told you how to think? Alana, are you there? Oh, yeah, I'll see she's there. But anyway, go ahead. Put put a put a for put an infinite for loop. Um, Google search. I, like, yeah, don't, don't try to remember. Yeah, one of the things is don't try to remember. Just Google search. If you don't know it, just do Google search. You have to. Computer science is not where you remember. Just do the quick Google search and then keep moving. Okay. And then you would put the code here and then make a while true statement, right? I think. Yeah, can, can you copy, what, do it Do yourself a step better. Can you copy and paste or it's in your notebook? Uh, I don't have, hang on one sec. Yeah, go to Google, say infinite for loop in Java and copy and paste it so you don't have any syntax errors. There we go. Uh, Um, yeah, it's just a while statement, right? Yeah, so copy and paste it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because there's different, like, there's a for, we learned about this literally, like, last week. Uh, while statements, yeah. for statements. Then... But, yeah, but see what you're doing? By talking, you, now you're losing track of the goal, right? You you yeah. want to you wanna stay on track of, on the simple step, right? If, if you kind of, like, if you if you if you try to branch out to other things, you might forget about the goal, right? So you want to try to stay yeah. on this goal. Let's stay on the goal, All right? So now let's let's print, let's print game board inside the while statement. It's going to ES system now, and now after that, or yeah, game board, yeah. Okay. And now after that print statement, you want to prompt the user for their next move inside the while loop, inside the while loop. Oh. Okay. And then you want to prompt the uh, user. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on. Um, this would be. Or 
or place a stone, something like that. But is that the way to get input from the user? System out print line? Or uh, is it another method? No, no. It's, you would have to... Um, Google, Google. Don't no, think, no, don't think Google. If you don't know it, in, okay. in, in one second, like, I, this is why I try to teach my mentees. If you don't know it in one second, Google. Like, your habit should be to Google. Okay. You, just, just Google it. Yeah, um, that, that's a habit you should have. No, I had to input something. You're, yeah, you're supposed to use a scanner. I was going to say a console, but system scanner. Don't think, hang on. Copy, paste, copy, paste. Copy, paste. Go, go, go to Google, oh. copy, paste. Like, like, this is your whole career, copy, paste. That's actually how copy you paste. want to do things. Okay, yeah, copy, paste. I mean, uh, can I just copy this here? No? Is Standard. that, all right, so let me ask you right now, right? Because the goal yeah. is that you have to ask yourself, what action I will take will help me get closer to my goal? So will bit will using that help you? Is that will using that help you get closer to your goal? Your goal right now is to get user input. Will that code help you get get closer to your goal? Yeah, because I mean you're supposed to. All right, then do it. Then do it. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. Because I would say to input something, you would have to have a scanner and then put integers into that scanner um, and hang on one second. All right. So, all right, before, all right, before that, right. What is the prompt? What is the prompt? You have to ask the user for their next move, right? Or what's so yeah, when they, um, when they, when the game board prints out, what happens? What's, what's next? Uh, stone because the pieces are called stones. You have black stones and white stones in the game. Um, but do I put that before the? No, oh, okay, no, yeah, no, no, no. Let's stop right there. Right. So you said place a stone, right? Yes. All right. So place a stone, and then after you place a stone, right? Yeah, the, they place a the stone, but they have to put it where? They have to put it somewhere on the game board, right? Right. Um. Like is so in chess you have like a one a two a three do we have something like that in in a uh, in a gumoku? Yeah, but I mean they don't. It, it's a fifteen by fifteen board. Okay. Right. Um. So uh, like you said, you can't do it like tic tac toe. But yes, you can. I think it's in, just a fifteen by fifteen board. Right. Is there a okay. name for each cell in that fifteen by fifteen board? Does each cell have a name? Well, yeah, we can, I mean, we could even just make a name, 1-1 one, one or A-1 or A-2, you know. Okay. Things like that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. O okay. So, oh, okay. All right. So, essentially, right, what we have is, like, tokens. Okay? So, basically, yeah. right, we have a 15 by 15 board of empty, of, of, em of empty cells, right? Right. So, we want to give those empty cells... A, a representation. Let's use um zero uh, zero o. Oh, let's use capital O. So on uh, open up another file, just just for your notes. Another. Okay. Um. Just. You... Yeah. Control N. We're not going to save it. It's just going to be for your notes. Okay. Control N. Yeah. Okay. Did it open? All right. Oh, that's okay. 
All right, we, we'll put as a comment here. Um, make a comment line 69, control slash. Okay, say a uh, capital zero means empty cell. No, like literally zero, literally capital up. Oh. All right, new, new comment. All right, so now capital B means black stone. And then capital W means white stone. Okay. So, so, so now Right. So basically, right, this this grid system, right, you said, um, right, since it's 15 by 15, if we do number, it might get a bit confusing. Let's do A and let's do the, the number. So A is going to be yeah. horizontal and then the number is going to be ver uh, vertical. Okay. And um, this is... so you have to prompt the user. So let, let Oh, so you're gonna so you're gonna prompt the you, you're gonna prompt the user place a stone, and then right they have to select from um A one through um M fifteen I think M is the fifteenth letter in the in the alphabet, right? So no we no more notes those are no more notes. So you're gonna get that input. You're okay, gonna get so, the input. Uh, so. No more notes. It's input. Um, play and then hold on. Hold on. Line our... sixty-eight. Do you use the scanner in line sixty-eight? Oh right. I thought we were okay. My bad. And so we the user has to I have to print this out, right? Uh, the user has to yeah to print out the user input, right? So that you know what it is. Okay. No, not, we're not literally printing that out. No, the value, the value uh, that you get from the user. So okay. the, the value uh, from SC. From SC, what? Yeah, the scanner, right? Line 68, that's where the scanner is. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we have to put um, um, uh, sorry, repeat that one more time. We have to put uh, a number from one to 15 and then A to M. All right, you gotta remember what the goal was, right? What's the goal yeah. here? Right now, what is the goal? It's to make the columns and rows for the board? No, it's to get the input from the user. Okay. And so, so how do you get the input from the user? Um, we have to, um, honestly, I'm not sure. What happens, what, what did I say when you don't know? Google? Google. Google. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. We're just trying to get rid of the bad habits. Okay, yeah. I mean, I don't want to have to actually, like, you know. Um, so, how to get user in? Put from uh, scan the name. Oh, there we go. Scan uh, into
So yeah. So did you figure uh, out how to get the the user input from the command line? Yeah, but I think it's for numbers only because it says scanner SC, new scanner system in, right? Yeah, so what's your goal? So what is the goal? So will will that will that help you get closer to your goal, yes or no? Um actually I think it will. I, I don't so numbers, so A15 is a number or a string? Wait, uh, is A15, sorry, so is, is A15 a number or a string? Oh, it's a string, yeah. Okay, so, so, gotta... so now let, let me ask you again. Will, will the answer that you found only for input, only for numbers, it get user number, will it help you get closer to your goal? Uh, no, because I need letters too. Yeah, but, so, so, I would so just, get, so... Yeah, don't try to explain the it when you say yes or no. I said okay. Now, what will help me get to my goal? Uh, this I would say, and replace it with this up top, right? Yeah, it, it, yeah. It says string input, right? Is that yeah, how you uh, get string, string input from from the user from the command line? Uh, I think so. I'm not 100 percent sure. What happens when you're not sure? Uh, Google it. Google. Okay. <laughs> Let me get. Uh. uh this. String. Oh, okay. I, I see. Okay. Okay, I think I know where, I'm at, where, where to go from here. Remember the scanner, yeah, from line. So remember the scanner from line sixty-eight. You want to delete that, okay? Yeah. It is. We want to be able to. grab the answer, right? So place the stall, right? So that prompt on line 67, right? You want to replace with the prompt on line 74. Okay. Um, 60, replace 67 with 74, you said, right. right? Yeah, right. I, I thought, well, because it's asking you to place a stone. Don't you need that? No? Yeah, 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 no. but you don't need how old are you, right? No. So replace it. So, okay. But couldn't I just leave it like that since it's system out print? Yeah, line? but yeah, you, the, the, you got to keep organized, right? Like, those yeah. are the notes about the game board. And the prompt mm -hmm. is at, at the top. You want to keep everything organized. 
replace just copy line sixty seven and replace it with seventy four. So everything's in one spot. Okay. Yep. Good. What, okay, what were you doing? Then... No, no, line seventy four. Seventy four. Yeah, paste yeah, line seventy four. Yeah, paste it there. Paste. Uh -huh. I I did yeah. No, you, you see how the notes are for the game board? Yeah. Yeah, the prompt should be with the rest of the prompt's code, not with the game board. No, don't okay, leave so that. Don't leave that comment. Just control Z. Hit control Z. Okay. Control Z. Control Z. Yeah. Okay, it's not working. Control Z. All right, yeah, so just on line 74, um, System out print line, please um please place the stone on line seventy four. Okay, now replace yeah. the yeah, replace with place the stone. Okay. And okay. then so now let's see line seventy eight, right? Okay. So it said alright, so now what should the prompt be? It should be like, hey, A one place stone at this position, right? Place stone at placed stone at, right? You're just telling you. Well, no, I mean, it, it should show you. I mean, it's supposed to display the board, so I. Yeah, but that's but to do the that's a big goal. Like you have to break it to small step. Before you display the okay. board, you have to know that you got the right input from the user, right? No, you're you're not going to be able to display a board in these next seven minutes. I want to show you, right? Because you have to understand why you're using an infinite loop in the first place. Right? Okay. So say place stone place stone at position. Okay, and then that'll be okay. plus Oh, what was that? And then it'll be plus no, and then you complete the string with open loop. You have to like string concatenation, right? And then no, the, the plus is outside of the string. So plus uh, no, not no that no not outside of the the braces outside of just right outside of the closing string. So outside of the, uh, I'm not sure where outside the string would be. Yeah, so you put it outside of the braces, right before the braces. Right, oh wait, so here. All right, like all right, let's go to the end of the string. Move your cursor to the end of the string. No, that's not the end of the string. That's that. That's the bracket. You're on line seventy eight still. Line seventy eight. End of the string. Right. So that's that's not a string, right? The string is the green. You see the double quote? Yeah. Yeah. Right there. Okay. Put the plus sign. That's the end of the string. Okay, that's not what I did before. Okay. No, it was inside the. You quotes? didn't do that. No, you you were just outside the the code itself, right? So let's just. Oh. So let's type in the variable position, P O S I T I O N. P O S I T I O N. Yeah. All right. So now copy that word. Okay. All right. And now you see string age on line 77? Yes. Yeah. Replace it with the word position, replace it with what you copied. Okay, now you see on line seventy eight how it says H plus. Uh yes, remove the H. Yeah, and remove the plus. Okay. So, so now, so now this is your game. It's running. 
Okay, so now let's try to run this code. Give me a sec. Yeah, copy paste. Yeah. Now let's try to run the code. Okay, so you get. Uh, I got it. Yeah, so delete the extra bracket. Yeah. Good. Okay, you still get an error. Very good. So where's the term? Let's go to the term. Uh, okay, here we go. Play game one. Okay, select a player. Uh, so, now, player so now it will be anywhere from that A1 to that M15, right? Uh, yeah, so A1. Good. So, so you see now it said place the stone at position A1. Right, so then you see mm -hmm. David, now keep going. Now type in another position. Okay, um, let's see, D3. All right, now place the stone at D3. Now, now, type, now type another position. Okay, so G7. All right, now place the stone at G7, all right? So, but you mm -hmm. see how it's the game board is repeating, right? Yeah. So okay. now, so see the baby step, like to to build this game board is you're not going to do it in the next uh, in, in the next three minutes. But now that no, game board, but now you see the functionality, right? That game yeah. board will render. Now you can only imagine that every time you place a stone, the game board updates. Okay. So okay. yeah, let. Let's I mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You first. Yeah, yeah. No, I was gonna say let, let let's see if you can make a fifteen by fifteen board and get that to print. Let, let's see if you could do that. At least get an empty fifteen by fifteen board to print. But um, what gonna ask? well, I was gonna ask. I should make a statement that says um, like the position's already uh, like full once I've placed it a stone there, right? See, that's like. That's like edge. All right, so that's something called an edge case. Like you don't even have a board. Yeah. You, you gotta have the board first, right? So it's like, like yeah. I, I I don't know what industry. Wait. So before can code, what what did you used to do? Uh, I was in business development. I did sales. Um, I was also okay. in the mortgage industry, but I, I'm okay. I'm so ahead before of before you sell to the customer, right? You have to get to the house first. You don't start talking about the house while you're in the car, right? Yeah. You're right, or the same thing in sales, right? You don't, you can't sell to someone without calling them first. Exactly. Right. So you can't like, you you can't, yeah. You you gotta be like, all right, in order for there to, in order for me to get here, right? I gotta get to this first step, like before I say, you know, you know, before we say something's at that position. There gotta be a board, so you want to make so you can see, cause, I, yeah, you see, yeah, so you can see, so you can see the value. So we want to, um, so let's go back. Let so it's not there's no more prompt, because after that, after you you say play stone, that's just going to be code to update. But now we need right. So let's scroll up. Let's let's scroll. Up. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Outside of this loop, right? Place your cursor at the end of line 16. At the end, don't open it. <laughs> Hit enter. I want you to make a 2D array, array list. Do you know how to make a 2D array list? Um, you mean horizontal Google. and vertical, right? Yeah. Do you know how to make a 2D array list? Uh, it's in my notes. Google, I, I Google, this, like, Google, third. stop, stop, stop. Google, Google. <laughs> uh, bad habits, man. Google. How to make a 2D yeah. array in Java. Don't. Um, yeah. That's where we will end. And then what I want yeah. you to do. Uh, yeah, just... yeah what, what I want you to do. Yeah, so let's make that 2D array. And then I'll give you that. And then you will fill that array with the, those empty cells, which is a capital up. And then we'll... Yeah, but right now I just want you to make that 2D array and I'll let you go. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, a 
array equals wait. How to make a 2D array listed job. So, uh, line 65, and then integer. Well, the string. Um, well, the string instead. Okay, so. Because of the capital R. Uh, sorry, instead what of it, make, make the type the shrimp. For line 66, okay. instead of it, make the type the shrimp. And then it's uh, equals. What no, are you doing? Equals. What, what are you doing? Hmm? I just said change the type. Uh, string? Yeah, it's string, right? Yeah, but you're not done. Where's the other? You see the int um, on the same line? There's another int. I see the. Uh, oh, okay, there we go. Yeah. What are you doing? Why are you doing then, new? Wait, why did you delete new? Oh, I thought that would be okay. You're just no. replacing the type. Is new a type? Uh, no. It's Is int a type? And I would wait. Why are you deleting the numbers? Yeah. Because we don't need them. No. Wait, but, but you copy, but it's fifteen by fifteen. No, I just said replace the type. Oh, okay. Hang on one second. I thought okay. Yeah, so we changed this to 15, though, right? Yeah, but uh, did I say earlier replace the type, not delete the type? You deleted the type in. Okay, I thought you meant actually delete the... the I said, what did I say? Yeah, 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 um, yeah but, but what did I say? You said remove the end. No, I didn't say, I said replace. Did, you remember me oh, saying replace? replace? No, I didn't. I, I, I thought. I mean, I assumed it was the same thing. But no. see, see, there you go. See that, and that's a bad habit you have to kill. Like when you're yeah. coding, you gotta stop making assumptions. You have to prove it to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You have to like when you sell. Yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah, you don't. You have to know. Like you don't make assumptions, and then the client finds out that you're lying. You gotta right. You don't want the oh. client to think that you're a liar. You gotta like. You gotta like know the product that you're selling, right? You do, um, but they also do say, there's a phrase in selling called assume the sale, like assume they're interested until they tell you they're not, and then you tell them why they should be interested. But you don't I, but like, again, go but, down, uh, yeah, yeah. but you don't make assumptions about the product, right? You don't say like, hey, this product no. could build six flags when it could really just build, uh, make you some coffee, right? So you, 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 right, you want to prove it to yourself. Right, that what you're saying to get yourself out of trouble, you want to prove it to yourself that uh, okay, that this is what. But you know, it's a, it's a lot. You know, I think you know this is good for now. Now you you but I know we we haven't been able to build the game, but I think two things you'll take from here is in order for a game to be a game, it has to run in an infinite loop. Yeah. Right. Like that's a and then um and then. Yeah, the a game board is actually a two D array. So, um, but so with that, I know. So hopefully we'll see you next time. But I know you gotta get going, so I'll let you go here. Okay. No, it's okay. I, I knew I wasn't gonna make this game in a day, but I you definitely did help me out a lot. I'm also gonna go to the um, to the coding thing that uh, that Stephen was talking about in uh, Guanus. So. I don't know if you're going to go to that, but uh, I'll, I'll definitely get some more input, and I'll reach out to my other, like, teammates about this, too. All right, yeah, sounds good. Well, hey, thanks for having uh, hop on the call. No problem. Thanks so, so much for helping me, uh, Leak, right? Yep. All right, see you. All right, sounds good. All right, see you later. And then, oh, I want to get, get back now with us. Yeah, I'm still here. Uh, can can you help me, please? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I can only help so much. I, I don't know, Ruby, but I mean, we'll see. I mean, you know, that's what you, you know. The, the, let, let's see how far we got. Hopefully, 
nowhere. Okay, so what what I need to happen here, and I figured out what's going wrong, but uh, oh, wait, why is this doing this? Okay, so what needs to happen here is when you create this new lesson. Okay, so I'm not sure if you saw what happened earlier. But right now I'm on the buyer account, and so like the controls that the buyer have are slightly different than the seller, of course. So right now that option to like you know pre-fill a message on the listing is not available to a buyer. Um, however, um, when the seller messages the buyer, there's like a thread here. So like every message exchange they've had you know, it's displayed here. Um, it, there is an option here to create a new message based on this message thread, which means I need to define who the recipient is. And I also need to define what listing. So I have the listing defined. That's perfect. Um, the problem is I don't have the recipient and the way I have my model, uh, I think I gotta fix some stuff, but pretty much what this is doing here is, uh, you have, you have, uh, the messages is literally just an active record relation. So I can just do like messages, right? And should display. Okay. No. Oh, that's because I didn't have the equal sign. Maybe that should get rid of that. Please. Oh, why is this happening now? Oh my gosh. Or oh, right, let's do add messages. Actually, add messages should work. Please work. There we go. So, uh, how does this work? Uh, so right now, no system preferences. No, no. Okay. Uh, right now. What I'm doing here is um, I'm getting the, key, I think the key value pairing here, and that's how I'm able to parse out um, the listing and the messages. So right now, messages, uh, is there a way for me to show this? I'm not sure. Like messages right now is a is an active record relation, and I'm trying to see if I can find a way for you to see that. Um, maybe in the logs. Maybe in the logs. Yeah, maybe in the logs. So, um, let's just make the what is this recipient ID? Recipient ID. Um, messages and this should work. You'll see something. Now, create a message. It must exist. That's the talk say. Log should say. There we go. Should say. Okay, so here is message. Um, Message returning. Not what I wanted you to see. Uh, there's a way for you to see. I forgot. Um, there's a way for you to see where messages is an active record relation. So just believe me when I say messages is an active record relation, meaning I can't actually uh, use any like uh, me helper methods on this, except, well, I can use helper methods, but. Uh, the helper methods like messages that recipient ID is not going to work because, uh, let's see. there we go. There we go. That's it. This is how you can see. So as you can see, messages here uh, is an active record relation. Um, and you, you know that because this uh, hash and that, uh, I think, what is that? Uh, angle bracket, uh, this is how you know that this is not um, like an actual, you can't call recipient ID on here. And that's why 
Um, but as you, as you can kind of see here, there is a recipient ID. So what I need to do is get that listing. So that's what I was trying to do earlier here, where I'm saying messages where the lister, the um, the listing buyer, um, and then get that recipient ID. And I'm not able to do that because listing is not defined anywhere in here. So I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> it's, yeah, so that's the problem. And it's like, that's the only thing that's preventing that like message thing from working. Cause right now I have the listing ID and that's, that's here. So I just need to get, I just need to get that recipient ID and I'm not able to do that. If you get, yeah, if you, all right, um, yeah, the recipient, an undefined method, re recipient ID, well, the messages class needs to have that recipient ID property, right? Did you make sure that there's a recipient ID property or no? Yeah, so, so you have to add it. Actually, wait a second. Let me go. I think there is. But let me let me check my model again. Message. Yeah, it does have a it does have a recipient. But that's a recipient. There's the spelling that that looks like it's the wrong spelling, right? No, because if you check the schema, um, it's there. Like the reason why this spelling is is different is because this was added as a um, what do you call it? Ah, uh, where's my migration? Um, it's added as a I forgot what that's called. Remove as what is this stuff? it was added as a reference there we go so it was added as a reference which just simply means i was like pretty much recipient is recipient id um because if you check the schema or actually if you check the the actual table that that column is there it's just uh yeah recipient is recipient and it's the ID of the recipient. So why don't you use the, uh, the property recipient then? Okay. Uh, let's try it. I don't think it's going to work. But let's try it. Let's start on recipient ID. Recipient ID. And then messages are recipient. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Uh, I, th I think it's something to do with my, um, the, I don't know. I have to somehow find a way to get that recipient ID out of the messages. And that's where I'm having a difficult time doing so. I know I could either use like, I know it's either dot where, or it could also be dot first, dot last. Like those are the only met methods that can be used on the active record relation. I just, for some reason, um, because the listing isn't defined anywhere here, uh, there has to be some other way to try to get that recipient out. You know what? Let's try something. You say messages out here in the constructor. Is that recipient actually going on the class, ending up on the class, or is just is just a value in the constructor? What's the constructor? On uh, and on the offer dot rb in line thirty five. Yeah, I see re 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 recipients listing dot buyer, but I don't think the recipient property is actually staying on on um 
Is it is it staying on? So uh, this is like a a completely different problem. That was that was the one I was trying to fix before this one. So this one just is a, a offer. So okay, how, how I have this set up is after you create a new offer. So that's the after create. Um, I want an offer message to be sent to the recipient or to the buyer. So this so after the seller creates a offer, then once that offer is created, a message is automatically sent in conjunction with that offer that says you have a new offer. The problem is I'm not able to display the URL. I'm only able to display the path. And if I change this, so let me comment this out because this will just keep throwing an error. Or better yet, let's just take recipient ID off because listing ID works. Okay. So if I change this to URL instead, I get a different error. And I have to sign on as a Will it work? I don't think it'll work. Yeah, I think I have to sign on as a seller. And then make a new offer and it'll throw that error. Oh, offers actually. Offer. Oh, I'll fix this later. There's blah, blah, blah. Right, so I get this error. Argument error missing host to link to. Please provide the host parameter that you def default URL options host or set only path to true. Uh, so I, I think what this wants me to do is uh, uh, it wants me to like. I don't know how to explain the URL error. It's like, it, it wants me to like, mm, it wants me to like change it to my like host or something and define that. Oh yeah, URL is not working in this case. One thing, yeah, one thing um, that I've been doing lately with my code, and this is gonna help you, is, is a debugger. Um, right, so the debugger, okay. Uh, it's a debug statement, right? Um, you put debug statements very parts of your code, and when you um, and when you run the code, right, you can see like what your code's doing before it gets to the error, and then you you can get the call stack and all that, right? So there's you see the fourth icon in in the extensions tray, in, in, in the yeah you see that fourth icon instead of running the debug, right? Mm-hmm. Right, so you need a launch.json, right? So what you want to do, you want to um, set up a launch.json. So it's going to be Ruby, right? So try to let's try to Google how we could um, set up um, Ruby on Rails debugger for VS Code. Um, or yeah. like the, the the way we've done it thus far is just we put debugger and like that'll pretty much do the same. I think it might do the same thing. Yeah, but, but we'll do it in the HTML, right? Yeah. It won't do it in the HTML. So we want to see the the values that are getting to your HTML. Okay. Uh, you said how to set up debugger. Oh, yeah, I didn't know Rails had a Ruby had debugger. I thought just JavaScript, but oh, that's cool. No, not no VS Code. No, um, ask via VS Code Launch Oh, okay. Yes. Launch, launch, launch that JSON. Launch. Yeah. Here we go. Install VS Code extension. 
create the launch that case on file, click on and debug button website, click create launch that case on file. This is gonna be small. I need to customize when and debug. Okay. Okay. Um, I already have that installed. So you're going to create it at the root of your uh, folder. Okay, so you see the second, go back to the, go back to the run, run and debug. You see underneath, create a launch.json. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, and now let's choose one. Choose, choose, uh, choose. Oh, the one according to the to the to the tutorial so this one okay good all right so now i fit it now i made that now let's go back to the tutorial to finish up setting that up go back to where oh the tutorial the dev oh dev .to. here save it and then put gem debug require false and run bundle install Okay, let me go to the gym file. Oh, I don't want to do this. Because it's... Okay. Alright, I'll just do it. Okay, sissy so gym file. Where is it? I'll just put it... Just put it up here. Oh wait, actually before that, I want to make sure I have it. I have, I have it. Okay, so I don't even need to install. I actually have that one. Gotta check that. Oh no, it says require false. Okay. Yeah, I kind of don't want to mess with this. <laughs> like they configured these these uh gems, and I don't know what's gonna happen if I mess with this one. Okay, find another tutorial. It was a good tutorial. I just want to mess with the gym files. Ruby debug extension. Oh yeah. Wait a second. So if I already have this extension installed, then doesn't it just automatically work? Yeah. The, see the launch.json, right? It, what what happened is that you have a launch configuration. Then you run. You hit the start button in run and debug. And then that's and then it runs it with the debugger. Then what you do, you put the breakpoints in the HTML. So you just click on line twelve, and a red dot would appear. Right, that you don't want them to run. Yeah, run together. Right. So. Let's get it.
number one. So I feel like that'll. Oops. So add configuration. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, I so I remember selecting Ruby, but where was that drop down to do the rail server? Yeah, add configuration. Wait, did type in Rails? Just type in Rails, maybe. Just type in Rails, no. Oh, does it say it? Mm mm. All right, we'll scroll down and see if the example is in the tutorial. Yeah, it says it says if you have launch.json, then click add configuration, select the Ruby Rails server option. Why am I not getting that option? Yeah, but it's showing you the it's showing you what you should get, so you might as well copy that. So you're saying copy this? Yeah. Okay. And then do I just put it on a separate yeah. like? Right, so yeah, yeah, you'll put it there. You'll you'll add it to the configuration. Okay. Oh, that's an array. Yeah, configuration is an array, so you have to close it. Oh. Okay, hold on. So paste that again and then close it here. Okay. Yeah, now now you're gonna to try to run the you're gonna to try to run it. Now, now before run that, it. can you hover over the type? Can you hover over type? It's give you an error, a warning. Yeah, hover over Wait, the type okay. keyword. Yeah. Line town type. Please use type node instead. Mm. Alright, you can ignore it. Yeah, so install Ruby extension. Okay. I yeah. thought that extension was already start uh, installed. Yeah, maybe it's a different one. Try the third. You see that third one there? Ruby Debug? This one? Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully that doesn't trick. Okay. Oh, still oh. have. Okay. Why is it not tell? It should at least tell me what extension it wants me to um install. Yeah. All right. Let's find that tutorial. Yeah, uh -huh. And then try to filter this the results to uh, this year. Wait. What did you say? Try to filter the results to all uh, this year or last year. How do you filter? I don't think I've done that before. I'll scroll it to the top. Tools. Tools. All oh, tools. Yeah. Oh, cool. Past year? Yeah. Okay. Okay, here's another one. Just keep saying this one. RDBG. Okay. 
Okay, so this one's this is different. <laughs> Oh no, it's not VS Code. Yeah, make sure it's a VS Code. Launch that JSON. That does say VS Code. Oh, okay, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, what is this? Proc file? I don't even, do I even have that? Fuck. I don't have this proc file that is dev. It's saying export Ruby debug open true as an environment variable. I do this within my prop file dot dev. I don't what is that? I don't know what that is. Um okay, let's let's try another one. Let's go Look short, yeah. Might might do it. This is good lab. So I have I have debug installed. So that should be fine. Let's just make sure. Yeah, debug is installed. It's there. No, I don't want to automatically stop and start GitLab. I don't use GitLab, so no. No, no, no. Okay. Alright, yeah, well, alright, very well. Then I guess it's, it's going to be too hard for now. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, uh, we're going to have to, uh, another day. Alright, well, we got to go back to the original. Okay. What is this? Yeah, so wait, debugger doesn't work in the in the model. Like this doesn't work. Yeah, no, it probably it probably does, it's just that, you know, we can't we're we're gonna it, it's probably it, it's probably not worth the effort. Yeah, it thought it'd be simple, but it is what it is. Yeah, I think what I'll do, I'll actually try that, like, on a project that's not associated with, like, my apprenticeship. Because I don't want to, like, the, the gym file one actually seemed like the most promising one. I just don't want to mess with, like, the gym files. Um, So, like, I think I'll do that one, like, after, like, when I'm working on, like, a personal project. But, um... Yeah, so I, I think, I think the problem, so I have like, I have two major problems and like one is this, this after create, uh, message here. Um, I just don't understand why I can't get the actual link instead of the path. Uh, and like, yeah, no matter what I do, I, I, I just keep getting the path instead of the link. And then when I do URL, I get that weird error message about something. I, I think it has something to do with the, how it, I don't know. It's, it's a weird one. I don't, I don't know what to do with that. So the path, like right now, um, I mean, technically it works, but it's not right. So like if I send this message, all right, I create this offer. Um, let's see. 
Why is it taking so long? Is my server up? Where where is my server? Uh did R RDBG do something to my server? It looked like it got rid of my server. Okay, let me uh let me just do this one. Still working out. There we go. Alright, so. Wait, why is this happening? I'm getting the same. Oh, the debugger is doing that. Okay. Like, why is this? I'm running into the debugger. That's why. Why is that? Again. There we go. All right, so the offer was created. So since that offer was created, I should get a new message here. All over here. Here we go. So that's it. So this is, yeah, so 205, 206. So right now I'm getting the path. So technically I could just say, all right, but I would have to have some sort of instruction like type this into your browser you know like if you want to access the 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 offers you would have to type this in and the problem there's some security uh issues with this that's why i kind of didn't want that to happen but yeah that's that's the only way you would be able to uh, access that offer. It's just I would have to put some sort of instruction here saying, yeah, type this into the to the browser after the whatever. Like type that path. I that's why I really just wanted like a link that you could just click on, and it'll take you there as opposed to this path. But when I do URL, I get this. This. I don't know what this is. Okay, so I think I'll leave it because, like, my, the TAs couldn't fix it. No one can fix that. So I'll just leave it. I think the, the main issue is that I'm, I'm doing this. I'm trying to call helper methods in the model. And helper methods don't really work the same in the model as they do, like, in the view templates. So it actually, I don't even think it's, like, you're su really supposed to call helper methods in the model. Um, so that's why this is just not really working. This one is just specifically for like when you're in a message thread and you want to just add a new message on that thread. Um, that's what this one does. So like this is listing 26 and all of these messages are for listing 26. And it says that. So I just want when I like click new message here, it should pre-fill the recipient um, and since I'm Lala the recipient will be Alana so it I need to find a way 
for that recipient to be defined as Alana. And then I also have to account for if the recipient is Lala, I have to find a way to account for that as well. And I don't know how to do that. Uh, that's what I'm like kind of struggling with. Plus, it's like I'm not even able to have like access to the listing because again, this this message is here. Like the way I did it, it's it's uh, um it's an active record relation. So I would have to try to parse it out using dot where, and then I have to find some other way to get that recipient ID out. And it's obviously not through the listing. So I have, I don't know how else I'm trying to think, like, I don't know how else I'm able to like actually get that, that recipient ID. Like I know it's possible. I just don't know. It's just not possible with the listing. Unless I somehow define the listing somewhere here. And I think I might have to do that in the controller. And I don't really want to do that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm not really sure either. Um, you, you know, um, yeah, 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 not, yeah, not sure. I, I, I mean, like, yeah, it looks, yeah, from the looks like it, all the, all the classes, the all, all the classes look like that. You, you know, they're they were they're supposed to be. So, yeah, I mean, something's just not. It's not the, the information is, yeah, yeah. It because I I don't see because all I saw that messages class is it, it extended. It, I think it was application record. Um, I'm not. How can you like show me how like the messages? Is getting that like a um I'm not sure what, what, what it was um how it's getting the other other properties in the first place. Um, ooh, let me see. Messages. Message. I think does this have something to do? So. Yeah, a message belongs to a recipient and a message belongs to a sender. So there is the foreign keys are recipient ID and sender ID. Yeah, so that, that's a comment though, right? It's not really showing me like how those properties yeah, that's got the, the message. That's, right? the, that's the schema. So pretty much it's it's saying that it's it's like what this stuff is in the database. Um, it's just saying like the foreign key is the, is the, is the, is the user IDs pretty much what that is. It's like the sender and the recipient IDs. Um, and then actually, let me go to my controller. It's controller. Cause I feel like, I feel like something. So here we are. Um, right here. Is saying the index is the message where the sender is the current user or the message where the recipient is the current user. And then this is some SQL here. Like, I forgot what and does that ampersand uh, sign. I don't know. I forgot what that does. But, it, like, it groups it by the listing ID. Um, I would have to, like, read up on this again but um that's like and then here like when you create a new message the recipient id like fetching the programs from the recipient id and same for the listing id uh i i think it, it i think i think it's no no I don't know. Uh, let's see. Actually, let me look up methods active record. Where's uh, okay. um, that list?
Yeah, so this is like the list of all of the methods I can use um, on that active record relation. So it's probably, maybe it's that I'm, I'm getting the wrong thing or something. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this is frustrating. So I just, I know that it's not listing. I, I think I might have, listing isn't defined. So I want to have to find it from something else. I just don't know how to do that. And I could either use dot where or any of these other methods. Probably, yeah, or find could also be one. Some of these others are probably a no, could maybe just include, I don't know, I just, for some reason, this doesn't work. Let's try it again. Yeah, C is saying undefined local variable or method listing. Yeah, the, the messages clearly have a recipient ID, so I don't know why it's so hard just to get that recipient ID. I just, I don't know. It not only has a recipient ID, it has a sender ID too. No, I forget it. Okay, so I just want to add some more styling. Um, I will. I don't know. I that doesn't work. So I, I definitely want to add like a carousel to the to the front page uh, to the landing page. So yeah, to just to fill this empty space down here. Um, can you help me with that? <laughs> Yeah, I know I gave you that carousel code from earlier, right? So you will have to use you have to um you have to you have to use it there, right? And I I remember giving you carousel code a long time ago, or try to yeah, see if there's did. like a, Ru a Ruby library that could do it for you. Okay. Yeah, I also need to fix. So I have this color feature. It's not. It's it's only working for um like it works for the background. Um, so it actually works. Uh, I, I guess the key is, is that when you refresh the page, uh, it goes away. So like that and like, I don't know, uh, till, was it Tailwind? I think Tailwind had this really nice feature where you could just, like, I don't think I, yeah, I don't think I have that. Like, if someone doesn't like pink, they can just kind of.
customize it to look the way they want it. Oh uh, yeah, that for as far as I know, that has to happen like at the start of the project, right? Because they have to like go everywhere, and you gotta like you have to make sure the colors that you could like swap them in and out. Yeah, I would. I mean, another way is like if there's all the classes, but. Okay. Okay, let's see what else is there that I want. Oh, yeah. So, like, the form inputs. So, because the form inputs look a little different, because I'm using rails, um, I kind of wanted to, like, customize those. And I started with this here. I like it. I have a model and everything. But then it's not responsive. Um. And like, what else wasn't responsive? I don't think the main page is responsive either. It's responsive design mode. Yeah, it's not responsive. So like after, what is that? Where does it go bad at? Yeah, I think for inputs you have to. I, I so for for that like get started page, right? You have to like make it stack. So instead of the image and the input side by side, you should have the image stack, right? That that was, that was at least for the other one. Right. Yeah, you're right. And I need it. I need that. And like, but like, also, you see the, the, like, what is this thing called? The navigation bar? Like, after 380, it, like, it hides those options. Is there a way to, like, make them? Like, I made a media query that actually gets rid of the lettering after so much. You see, like, it gets rid of home. Yeah, you, could, you have a media um, query that does that. What would the media query look like to like keep these icons on the page after it's resized to? Even smaller than this. Right. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I think something happened. Not not exactly sure. Is it here or in Slack? In Slack. I'm like scared to push any new commits to main after what happened before. Media only screen and max width. Okay. But then like what else do I what else do I do here? Like like how do I um like, what would the nav bar, um, how are they going to navigate, like, if the screen is smaller, like, how do they navigate between, how do they get to these other pages, then? Yeah, by clicking on it, right? Oh, yeah, it's okay. Okay, um, okay, so, let me go back. Yeah, and then usually for mobile, instead of, yeah, so, right, they'll click on it. Yeah, they'll, they'll click on it, right? That's how they'll navigate. Yeah, but... What if, if it gets yeah. even smaller? Oh, uh, then you need a menu bar. Yeah, but 
you have to do research on what's the minimum width a phone could be, right? So if there's no, because like usually um, it's like 320, um, that's a rough estimate. But if the if the minimum width of a phone doesn't get to like 270, then you know, then you don't have to build for such a for such. But um, you, what you could instead of like having that bottom bar, what you could do is you could have a menu bar. And a menu opens up, so you have to put a menu so, bar at the top of the screen, and then the menu will go there. So I could do a, the like the three bar um, icon, and then like when it gets to uh, what is this? So it starts to mess up at like three ninety or four hundred. Yeah, four hundred. Let's do four hundred. Okay. That looks better. So, like, once it gets to 400, then I will put the, like, the three bar icon, and then this would go, this would disappear, and it would, and the, all of these would be up there. Say it again. Say, say, yeah, say, so, say, wait, say, yeah, say one more time. Right. Can you hear me? Is it disconnected or no? Yeah, I hear you now. All right, yeah, I, I said, say that one more time. Oh, okay, so what I was saying was, uh, so once it gets to 400, or if it's 400 or less, um, then I would put that three bar icon like you know like the i don't know what one is how that will work yeah 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 I think I think it's the end of the day. I, I think it, you know, you know, it's it's been a long, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's been a long day. So yeah, it's fine. It doesn't matter, you know. Yeah, I I gotta know like sometimes like you know like even me like I can't. I just sometimes you gotta throw the rule book out the window. Sometimes you know, just to try to get the job done. So uh, yeah, so th yeah, that's what you'd say, and then. You, you put a menu bar, so you have to add that menu bar, like you have to add that menu icon to the nav bar, and um, and then you'll have to, uh, and then right, and then when the screen is a minimum is is greater than four hundred, then the icon has a display of none. But when it's less than 400, then it has a display of blocks so that you can see it. Okay. Uh, so, question. Uh, where do I add the, the, like, the drop down or the, that, that top menu? Yeah, so, yeah, I would start to look into libraries to see if they can help you out. Essentially, what you do, you would add another div on the whole page, right? That'll be position absolute, right? Its top will be zero, its left will be zero, right? And and then, right, you ha have a div on on the on on the top of that page, and then that's where the drop. It wouldn't really be to animate it. I think 
at that point try to look for a library um but you essentially what you want is you want something to come on the page so you have that div that'll just act as like this you're, you're like a you'll have that div that covers the whole page and then in there there's going to be another div that's going to be 80 percent of the width of the page and then there's going to be all your then you could like have all your options right so yeah you okay. keep that but yeah so first things to... first you have to make the menu icon Okay, I have to go to the, because I'm on the wrong page. That's the thing, like, I have all these different um, partials, so I'm, I think I'm on the wrong page. I have to go to the home page, the home page, uh, where is this? Uh, this is, yeah, it's the show for the home page. Yep. Okay, so I put, do I put everything that's on this page in a div and, and no you make a make... new div the size of the page oh okay so where do i put that div outside of this div it has to be on the outermost of everything yeah okay, so div dot um where's this home container or something. Okay, so then uh CSS for that. And this is the home because then which yeah home CSS. And then but was a home container. I want to say home container. Yes, home container. And then you said make it the the size of the page. Or would I do view height or what I do? Yeah. View height. Okay. Yeah, VW and then VH, right? Yep. And then IH. And let me put a port. Oh, no. I forgot. Every time I do CSS, I have to run that assets precompiler thing. So annoying. Yeah, so the home container won't have a border. Actually, yeah, it could have a border. Yeah, we could have it like that. But what I want to say is that the home container, and you have to have the Z index in front. So in order to see it, you want the Z index to be in front. So you have to give it like a Z index of like 10 just to see it. Essentially, like everything should have like a Z index of zero and it, it should be zero Z index of one. But if you don't know, right, you could just leave it at 10. What I like to do is I like to leave it at five because Safari, like the whole Z index of all the elements at five. But no, no, this one is, is going to be in front. It's going to be in front. So you just leave it as 10. I, I would say one, but I don't know about you. Do you know about all the Z indexes in the in your application or no? No. <laughs> Can you do a quick? Yeah, so we'll just leave it as ten just to be safe. So position would be absolute, yeah. and then the top would be zero, and then the or you could say inset is zero. Yeah, inset is zero. That's your shorthand. Okay, now I have to do this rails. Assets pre compile. <sighs> so annoying. I don't know why I have to run Rails assets pre compile and restart my server. Completely restart the server in order to see the changes to CSS. So it makes this so much harder. Yeah, what I, okay. what I, what I do is I have a, like a script write a script that will you know we have a go script that that helps with that but yeah if you could like write a script that instead of like running rails directly it runs rails in that script like a file watcher so there's a lot of file watcher uh libraries out there and um right you could try to use that so instead of that you just run the script 
and then every time there's a change in it, and then it listens for the CSS file. Every time there's a change, then it just like runs that command. It's command line, but you know. Um, all right, good. So let's say 99.99.9 VW at VH because 100, it likes to, it doesn't like to flush. So if you say 99.9, it will probably want to flush. Yeah, it, it, one of those, right? 0.99, yeah, you know, hopefully it gets, gets a flush. Yeah, it's still not. Yeah, just say, oh, let's oh, try. Wait, wait, I have to run the Rails SS pre-compile in order to see that. <laughs> okay, can you, can you edit the um, CSS in the browser instead so they have to keep you running that? Uh, how do I do that? Because like, I know I can do the one where it, like, temporarily makes those changes, but I can't do the, like, I can't yeah, make yeah, any... just, Yeah, that's what, yeah, the temp, the temp changes. You okay. just want to keep changing it until the, the overflow goes away. Let me actually exit this, and then, uh, that would be here. So, that would be here. So, please work. Yeah, it works. Okay, at least works here. Yeah, keep 99 and then. Yeah, and keep trying it. Just keep um, decreasing it until the, the overflow goes away. 98. Oh, yeah, I'll already. Oh, yeah, that works. 98. Uh, no, that's a little too much. So, like, 98 point. Okay. That works. That works. Is that is that good? Or no, it's not. I was only looking at the right side because it got rid of. Wait, 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 wait. No, <laughs> no. Actually, let me go back into the responsive mode well, receipt. Yeah. No. What's happening here? Uh, it's uh, it's the height of the screen. Yeah, you can say position fixed, so it'll always it'll always hover over everything instead of position absolute. Ah, uh, let me not do that here because that does nothing. I have to run that annoying command. <laughs> let me just do it here. And then here was just this one, 98. And then, like, why is the left side disappearing when I do that? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. As long as it flush, as long as you don't see the scroll bar, right? Um, right. Um, and now, um, yeah, let's say a uh, position. Yeah, and now let's say position fixed, so it doesn't. All right. So now those values, ninety eight point nine, put them back in your VS Code. So now you you want um. So so now in there, right? So now like the background, um. So make the background color um black, but give it like opacity. Yeah, back background color. And then give it like an opacity of like point five, so that people know. I have it. Oh yeah, here opacity and then you said point five. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me run Rails asset compile. I keep looking. So, I don't know why. <laughs> why? This is all because I don't like Bootstrap. I like had I just gone Bootstrap road, I wouldn't have to go through all of this. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, we should. It looks very useful here. Um, it's ugly. <laughs> I don't like those shirts. <laughs> like, you can't do anything with it. Like, it's hard to customize it. Like, it's just a standard. I don't like it. All right, good. Yeah, so that's a container. And now, then you'll make a div in there. So now you'll make the div. So now you make another div, which is 80% of that that div. And then that'll be the uh, that'll that'll be the mobile nav uh nav nav um that'll be the mo mobile navigation. Okay, so I'll say mobile. Can I say mobile nav? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Alright, and then let me go back to CSS. You said the width would be 80%? Yeah. Okay. And then give it the background color, right? The, the pinkish color that you have on your website. Oh, where is that? I think it's in the application. Wait, why did I do that? It's already open here this here copy this whole line okay let's rails assets pre-compile and we start this here Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where, where is it? Do you see it? Can you hover over it? I want to make sure I see it. Because I don't see it. Is this it? I see something yeah, here. Yeah, I don't see anything on the screen. Is it behind it? Can you say like, uh, yeah, no, it should be, it should be on the Z, or on the screen. Yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not seeing it. Do you see it oh. or no? Let me see. I don't. I I don't see anything either. Hold on. Home container. Home lab. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like it's on the screen or something. Oh, uh, yeah, where, where is it? You know what, let me put a border. I think a border, or, or would a border make a difference? Let's put a border in here. Yeah, there it is. Oh, so it needs to have the height. Yep, and it needs to have the height of the container. Okay, so uh, the height should be a hundred percent. Yeah. There we go. Right, and then there you, you just put like you have a, a list item of all the uh, of of the um, of the things that you want to put there. Okay, so then uh, where is the actual? 
shouldn't have bars. It should be here. Put this on this side. And then uh, I just want all of this stuff. Um, could, could I copy all of this? Yeah, yeah, you're probably gonna have to modify it, right? So, but yeah, you can copy it, I guess. Format, format, format. There we go. Okay, okay so then, what? What part should I? Oh yeah, I have to get rid of. I have to get rid of these icons. So I think all I want is just a link, like you know, like a, like a like a, a link. I don't with the name. I don't need the icons or anything. So then I guess I could get rid of this, and then I'll just keep home. And. This can go and I don't want the button. button. None of this. Don't want this. I don't want this heat. I don't want this. Oh, and I don't think I... Okay, I think that's it. Wait, what does that look like now? Okay, should I actually change these to list items? Yeah, yo, yeah. I need this right now. We just want to just see the. Let's try to just see the screen first. And... Where even is it? Or do I have to do that? Um, do I have to do the Rails SS precompile again in order to see this? Like, why is it not showing up? Uh, do you have to? Right. I don't think so because this is HTML, so the HTML should just show up uh, automatically. Oh, I see it. Yeah, it's 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 like right over. Yeah, you you see how like. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see it now. Yeah, so it's you, over the. Yeah, you gotta like really edit this. So it, oh, it's supposed to be inside the mobile map, not the home container. Right. Oh, it's inside of mobile now. Yeah, or you gotta probably gotta remove the navbar class. Yeah, you gotta like oh. see now it's here. You, you gotta like edit it. You have to like edit everything out and make sure that it's like it, it stacks up from there. There we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah. That's you, it. Yeah, you probably, now you have to probably use CSS to make it look nice. You would probably give it like the title logo. <laughs> what? I don't even want to use CSS because I have to go through so much just to even see it. But yeah, let me let me make it look better. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, well. Okay, uh. What else is there to do? Because, to be honest, it looks fine. I don't even want to mess with it. Yeah, you got to be able to toggle it, right? So, you have to add, like, an X mark in the home container so that you could close it somehow. Or not or, or not even. I, I guess if you click on... Yeah, you don't even have to add an X mark. Just It just okay. set, like, a click handler. Once the handler is clicked, then you could... Um, then you could close it. Okay, I want this. I want like an icon, like okay. uh, like the three bars. Wait. This 
this one here, this here. Yeah, oh, you need the X mark to, oh, yeah, yep, yep, that one is for to open it, yeah. Yeah, like, you, is, in, Ruby, in Ruby on Rails, is there a way to, like, have the variable control the HTML? Like, if the variable is set to this, then, is there, like, binding? There's binding, right? I actually don't know. Okay. You would have to shoot me. Like you would have to show me what that is, cause oh. I don't. I'm not sure. I've never heard of binding. I don't. I'm not. I don't know. Okay. 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 So I would add the uh, the icon in the home container. No, the the menu bars goes from on that page in the index HTML, right? That's to open to open the menu the mobile menu. Oh, uh, where? Right in the index HTML, right? You want to add the X mark, right? Or you want to open the or close the menu? I want I want it I want it for opening the menu. Alright, yeah, so you have to do it from the landing page, right, where the nav bar is. That is the that is the that's not the landing. It should be the it should be the home, right? Yeah, it should be the home. Alright. Okay. So then Wait, where am I putting that in the in the home container? Or uh, no, outside? that's misleading. That's not a home container. That's the that's the mobile nav container. Oh, okay. So I have the home container, and then I have the mobile nav container inside of the home container. Yeah, it wouldn't. Yeah, home. Yeah, that that home container is to show the mobile. Like you have to open it first, so it can't be from inside there. You you can't. Okay, open. so this is the. Mobile nav container is what that is. Okay. Yeah, so where's the nav bar? The nav bar is down here. Yeah, so it'll go there. Oh, wait. No. No, the nav bar is on the different. It's a partial. So it's somewhere else. This is where the nav bar is. In a partial. Yep, so yeah, we'll put in you put in that nav bar over there. Okay, so div dot nav uh, bar icon the nav bar icon. Okay. There. Okay, so I have it there, and let's see if it's... Um, wait, what? Wait. Oh, here it is. I see it here. Oh, it sh yeah, it shouldn't be there. It should be at the top of the screen. Okay. Yeah, the top right of the screen, right? So it has to go in, in the top right of the screen. Oh, okay. So then I would have to go back. Yeah, let me go back. I think it should be here then. Yeah, here. Okay. There we go. There. Yeah, and then we put, so, so now you have to set it all up. So home, home container, you have to change the class name. The CSS to your mobile nav, and then you have to somehow when you click it, that the display is blocked, and then when you when you when you click um, the the bar icon, then the display turns out to be blocked. So, so this is mobile nav container, and then. Oh, uh, this icon, the nav bar icon, 
Is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay. So then. And then you said, uh, what did I have to do? Right, so when you click on it, then a uh, mobile nav container, its display is blocked. So right now, mobile nav container, its display should be none. Display, none. Okay. Right, and then, some, and then when you click on the icon, then you have to somehow change the display to block. So that would be like something like on click. Yeah. We have to do some JavaScript. Okay, how did I do that before? I did that with uh. Do I have a script tag somewhere? How did I do this before? Oh, uh, it. Should be wherever the landing page is. Then FA bars was where a div dot color change your input. Um, would that be div dot? No, not div dot. Would that just be this? FA yeah. bars. Yeah. Okay. Right, that your query selector is the class, right? So there's no input. Right, it's just be FA bars. Right, and then dot FA bars because it's a class. Okay. Right, so now the function, right, you have to select the mobile nav container and you want to change its uh, display value to uh, block. Okay, so then instead of this being background color, you said, um, you said change the display to block? Yeah. Wait a second. Uh, how do I do that? Yeah, I've never done this. yeah, just. Um, style dot display equal block. Okay. Display and then this equal block. Got it. Yeah, the string block, right? So click is a string and block is a string. Right, so body tag's not defined, so that's going to have to, you have to do the document query selector and then the mobile map container. Okay, that, that makes sense. So... You said mobile container? Yeah. Yeah, mobile nav container, right? The class. Mobile nav, okay. All right. Right, right, and then that should be it, right? And then that should be it. So now, once you click, right, it, it should make the menu appear. Wait, do I have to re? Let me restart this. Okay.
Oh, and then put a value so you can see it. What is that, changer? Yeah, just fire. A uh, string, yeah. Any string? Yeah. Okay, so it fired. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we'll probably have to put. Uh, okay, um, can can you uh, right? Let's put put the console log in the event listener. Let's try to see if it's calling the function at all. Okay. So in here. Yeah. After this one? Yeah. Okay. Mm -mm. I didn't, I didn't do anything. Yeah, no, you have to click now. Right, because it's inside the event listener. Oh. Right. Uh, so yeah, if you're clicking and it's not, uh, and that's not coming up, then it's probably the selector. Yeah, can you can you go to the elements pane? Let's try to look closer. So you see F A F A F A dot large. Yeah, yeah. Let's do a nav bar icon because it looks like the element gets replaced. So instead of F eight dot bars, let's do the nav icon. Let's see if that'll do it. Okay, so nav bar icon. Nav bar. Okay. Oh, here we go. Type error. Null is not an object. Evaluating body tag dot style. Yeah, yeah. So so basically, right? Um, it display none means it can't find it. So instead of display none, we have to like. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's tough, right? Because display none means that you know it, it's it's not on the DOM. Like it, it's not even going to render, right? Um. No, actually, no. That can't be right. Um, type type null. Can, can you go back to your code? Let's try to see if you. Uh, yeah. So you, it's dot mobile now container. Yeah. That, so that's right. Um, yeah. It, it might be display is is none. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think a better thing that we could do is set a display none. I think for now, instead of display none, can you set the width and width and the height to zero? Okay. Yeah. Delete the, delete display none. And then in the, in the function, we'll, we'll set the width and the height to, uh, 98.9. Oh, in the, yeah. Oh, okay. So here zero. And then in the function, we'll put 98.9. Yeah. Okay. Display block. And then, uh, I forgot this. Uh, how do you add the width and the height? Yeah, it's say body tag, that style, that width. And that's equal to 99.9. .9. Does it have to be a string? Or... Yeah. Yeah, it's a string. Or it was 9. Was it 99 or 9? Wait, it was 99.9, .9, right? Or 98.9? .9? Yeah, 98.9. .9. Okay. 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 Uh, 
Wait, could you chain these? Like, could you also? Never mind. Never mind. Okay. Now let me rails assets recompile again. Piper, no is not an object. Evaluating body text style. Can you do document query selector? Because I, I see it at, at the top left of the screen. Can, can you do a document query selector mobile map container? Yeah, I, I, there might be something wrong with that string. Okay, this one here? Yeah, and co copy and paste document.query selector into the... Uh, into the browser console. Well, it seems like you got it. Yeah. Yeah, I think what might be happening is that it, it's it's uh it's like it's not it's not finding it it's like it's running the script is running too early or it just might be that if you go to your scripts right let's go back to your html yeah it, it might be that like this script is run before be before before you create the mobile map container so move the body tag inside the function the move the body tag declaration inside the function. Um, uh, that'll be difficult because... No, just move it in. No, Wait, yeah, copy line so like... and move it into line so in the function. Oh, okay. I thought you meant, like, actually add it. Never mind. Okay, got it. So, like, you said uh, move that where? See, see body tag on line 9? Yeah, I got it. Copy that whole line you... and move it into the function. Okay. There you go. Yeah, it's, and then let's um, yeah, let's try that, and then once that works, you could um make the display. So yeah, but it's not it's not updating enough. Can, can you inspect the element? Try to see. You might it might it might be this uh, one. Yeah, the mobile map container. Yeah, let's try to see if we did. It, the height's not getting set. Yeah, it looks like the width and the height. Um, maybe you have to uh restart the rail server. Oh. Okay, yeah, I think I see why. There's like a space. There shouldn't be a space between VW and 98. Awesome. All right, yeah, so, and now, now you just turn back, back to display. Now, yeah, now you should turn everything back to using display, and then it should work. So, display not, wait. Yeah. Okay. okay. Display. 
going on. And then, uh, is there anything else? Yeah, the, the turn the whiff and the height back. That says precompile. Oh my gosh, this thing takes forever. Yeah, it, it, yeah. What you want to do? You want to all the width and the height. You want to um turn it back to oh. the original. Oh, values. yeah. Okay. The, and then, could I get rid of these, or should they yeah. stay? Yeah, you get rid of those. Yeah, you could get Did rid of those. Them? Okay. Nine with uh ninety eight point nine feet high. That was SS precompiled Okay, so then I need an X icon. I was wondering, like, could, is there a way to just make it where, like, if you click on it again, it closes it out instead of having to add, like, an X? Wait. You can't, what right? Happened? Because it's the menus over, on top of the on top of the icon. So you need an X. Right. Okay. So then I got to fix. I have to fix this. And apply styles to this. And then, okay. Wait a second. When you click off to the side, no. It, could I do it like if you click off or like like click away, click anything else that isn't that? Yeah, yeah, you can. But um, uh, yeah, we'll have to do. I have to. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, you have to. Yeah, but I think we're gonna end here. Uh, definitely have to okay. get going. So. All right. Well, thanks. All right, no Thank problem. you so much. Bye.